When the Arctic winds blow across the Great Plains of North Dakota, the winters here can be brutal. Temperatures have been hitting record lows this month, dropping below minus 30 degrees centigrade at times. Exposed skin can suffer frostbite in minutes. But at the borders of the Standing Rock Sioux Tribal Reservation in the south of the state, thousands of people are still hunkering down in the camp to protest against the Dakota Access oil pipeline. The protesters are Native Americans from across the US and environmental campaigners from around the world. They say the $3.8 billion project creates an unacceptable risk of a spill into the waters used by the Standing Rock tribe. Many protesters were unprepared for these brutal conditions and quite a few have already left. You can see the little flimsy tents they left behind. A couple were treated for hypothermia, but others are settling in for the long haul. Groups of volunteers, including US military veterans, have been putting up wooden huts, collecting donations of blankets and coats, and laying in firewood. Earlier this month, they had some good news. The US Army Corps of Engineers denied a crucial permit, known as an easement, needed to complete the pipeline. When you could bring people together to unite as one, when it could be indigenous people, I've seen people, Aztec people, dancing in tradition. And the recognition from throughout, you come from far land too. So that is in itself is a success. The chairman of the Standing Rock tribe, who earlier in the year called people to come here to fight the pipeline, now says they should return home to escape the harsh conditions. But the protesters do not believe their fight is over. It's no problem to me. I mean, I was born, in, I was born and raised in a log house, you know, with just a wood stove. So I'm familiar with it, no problem. And as far as being here, uh, like you just uh, stated, hey, I'm, I'm here for the long haul. The chairman said that um, basically that no one really needs to be here anymore. And uh, we're guests here, so I'm going to respect that and do as he wishes. You can't actually get up to the root of the pipeline because the road's been blocked with concrete and barbed wire, but it runs behind that ridge over there and just over there where the lights are behind me. And over there is where the final section is going to be, or it's going to be dug under Lake Oahe. And that's the section that's causing all the protests. Dakota Access is intended to carry crude 1,172 miles from the Bakken oil region of western North Dakota to a storage hub in Illinois. From there, it can go on to refineries in the Midwest or along the Gulf of Mexico. 92% of the pipeline has already been built, but the oil can't flow until the missing section under Lake Oahe is completed. An alternative route running north of the city of Bismarck was considered but rejected by the Corps of Engineers because it was longer and created a greater risk of spills. To the Standing Rock tribe and its supporters, it looks like a familiar story of the US ignoring the interests of Native Americans when there's a profit to be made. The opponents of Dakota Access call themselves water protectors, and this is the water they want to protect, the man-made Lake Oahe on the Missouri River, which provides some of the water for the Standing Rock Reservation. The tribe says it doesn't want to stop the pipeline altogether. The Sioux just don't see why they should be forced to bear the risk of a spill. At the Prairie Nights Casino on the reservation, where protesters fled to take shelter from the weather, many see it as part of a much wider battle against fossil fuels. I think part of it, again, this is a linchpin, and I feel like they, this is a lot of people have come together here. A lot of people from the Sioux Nation have come together that, that were not uh, necessarily as cohesive as they would have been, and now all of us are joining together to, in, in this fight for our planet. I'll be back in the spring to help clean up and to help continue, and I believe that we'll probably be going down to uh, Florida to help a protest in one of the other pipelines. For oil producers in the Bakken region, about 250 miles northwest of Standing Rock, Dakota Access is a lifeline. The pipeline will be a much cheaper option than the alternative used today, sending the oil by rail. Brigham McCown, a former safety regulator who's been helping Donald Trump's transition team, expects the block on the pipeline will be lifted under the new administration. You know, the concern is, if not in my backyard, and really that's what they said to me, uh, the, the tribe... Uh, said, look, uh, we're not, we're not anti-pipeline uh, and we're not anti-energy independence. We just don't want it next to us. And of course, if everybody had that sort of mentality, we wouldn't be able to build a road, a bridge, or a prison, or, or you name an airport, you name whatever it is. So 
You know, I, I think the Army Corps got this right when they went through the permit the first time around because other routes were rejected. And this one came up because it had the least impact on the fewest number of people. Donald Trump has said he plans to have the holdup to completing the pipeline solved very quickly once he's in office. If his administration does grant the permit that Dakota Access needs, the protesters acknowledge their options are limited. Their past attempts to get closer to the root of the pipeline have been beaten back with tear gas and fire hoses. A spill that tipped about 3,000 barrels of oil into a creek over at the west of North Dakota has strengthened the protesters' resolve. When Mr Trump does try to get construction underway again, he'll face legal challenges. And even if those ultimately fail, there are many thousands who are glad they've come here to raise the profile of their cause. Many people here accept that they aren't going to be able to stop the pipeline forever. There's too much money at stake, and with the full authority of the federal government behind it, Dakota Access probably will be able to sink that last section under Lake Owyhee. The protesters, though, say that's not entirely the point. They've made a stand, and they've also set an example for other protests against other pipelines in the future. Ed Crooks, for the Financial Times, at the Achechi Shikoan camp in North Dakota.